Dave King from The Collaborative, and I'm here today with Drank the Gold, uh, with Una and James. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, you have a album release show this Sunday at uh, the famous Cafe Lena, and um, thank you for coming on. Everyone can check out the new album, uh, Dip, Dipped in Silver? S- Sip, Sip the, the Silver. silver. Sip the Silver, yeah, sorry. The, the, the script is... A <laughs> Yeah, I should, I should be better at that by now. I can't read my own handwriting, though. So. <laughs> um, I cut the letters out of, uh, you know, with a little exacto knife out of a uh, out of a piece of paper, and then we scanned them. Oh, very them. cool. Yeah, I was, tra- I was, was trying to... It was a bit of an art project. <laughs> the fonts are very hard. I mean, I, I understand why graphic designers, like, there's people who just do fonts. Yeah. Because that's... Thing, so you gotta make your S's look like S's. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of look like D's. I don't know. <laughs> so how long, uh, how long uh, have you been playing together, and what was it like? How did you, how did you decide to, to form this project? We've been playing together like four, four plus years mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we we actually met um, at a Cajun music festival in Louisiana of Whoa. all places. Um, yeah. So I feel like we've we've always had music as a aspect of our relationship, and I'm from Ithaca, New York, mm-hmm. a couple hours west of here, um, which has a rich music community. And I grew up playing music. James has lived here for uh, quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, twenty twenty years or more. Been up in Saratoga for about twenty years. So, um, well, in, in Saratoga has uh, a rich. Obviously, folk music history and, and Kathleen yeah. Lena. Um, yeah, a lot of music up there. So, uh, can you talk? I mean, uh, what was it that that got you? Was it was it uh, as basic as elementary school music education that got you uh, playing your instruments? Um, was it was it a fascination with with the music you heard on the radio? We, we have two different kind of stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I grew up playing violin. Um, I started lessons when I was four and a half doing the Suzuki method uh, violin. Um, wow. So kind of as long as I can remember, I've been playing music. But also, um, as I mentioned, Ithaca has this really vibrant music community, and a lot of my family friends, not my my parents didn't play music, but, but a lot of other folks we were hanging out with are musicians. So I just can remember being at parties and people playing music and falling asleep on the side of a stage or whatever. <laughs> so it's, it's just been a, a sort of an everyday aspect of my life and there's this music festival the grassroots music festival that are some of these same friends started Mm -hmm. and so I grew up going there and again like just seeing you know people performing and and these great uh, acts coming from all over the world Um, and then as a teenager I started learning fiddle um, Irish fiddle Mm -hmm. um, partly because that's my ancestry and and again I I was kind of hooked kind of into it and started traveling to Ireland as a teenager to, to study and learn more. And um, and then I went to college in Ireland. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so I kind of like went, went <laughs> deep in with the Irish music um, and ended up back, back in this country after college and have been just sort of continuing to play Irish music but broadening my skills to play other types of music that I love and, and especially different types of fiddle music. And I, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm wondering, when you, what, what did you go to college for? And I studied you? music okay. in Cork. Very cool. Um, so, but it wasn't, it was sort of like a academic music education. So at the musicology really, so I was studying music from all over and all different types. And James, what was your... <laughs> <laughs> He's got well, I, a different story. I didn't grow up playing so much but um and my parents always took me to musical events like concerts and things and and uh going the episcopal church that i went to had a full-time choir director and organist and they they were fantastic musicians so i got to hear a lot of classical music that way and um yeah but it wasn't until kind of after college that i really got into playing and performing and I would play bass in rock and roll bands and you know just kind of stuff you like just that jump into yeah whatever just jumping was into fun situations at the time I feel like yeah I I always I didn't really have like a formal training background but I would always you know even when I was a teenager I would mess with guitars and keyboards and things and 
you know, I was kind of got into recording and electronics and things like that, and I just sort of was experimenting. But well, I mean, this area has, has such a rich uh, community around folk and uh, also Irish uh, traditional music. Uh, what's it like being part of that? I mean, do you feel like you have this larger community, or are you more... Well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really aware of, because I didn't grow up, you know, in a family that played folk or right. traditional music. Um, you know, I saw that was something that, like, other people did. Um, but I, it, once I started playing the stuff with other people, I realized that I had, it was familiar to me, like, I had heard a lot of this stuff. Um, but I just wasn't a participant, mm -hmm. and now I'm a participant. And there's lots of participants around. It's kind of <laughs> it's it's really neat. It's yeah, there's a great scene. We were just listening to this uh, podcast about old time music um, called "Get Up in the Cool," and one of the things that struck me was that a lot of the different guests kept mentioning that with folk music and old time, and you know, it would apply to Irish music too. Is you just get together with people that you've never met before, and if you know the same tunes, you don't need you can just play together. You don't, you don't need, need to, need to rehearse. rehearse. You don't mm -hmm. need to discuss like what you're going to do. It's just like, oh, you, do you know this tune? Yeah, I know this tune. Let's play it. And then you can have this immediate conversation with a stranger, which is pretty cool. I mean, I, my uh, my family goes down to uh, Jake Moon in, uh, gee, where is that, Clarksville? Uh, anyway, uh, but every Sunday mm -hmm. they have, you know, folks with the fiddle, fiddle and banjo mm -hmm. and just... Oh, cool. Knocking out tunes while mm -hmm. you eat breakfast, and uh, you know it's it's it does feel very much like that, um, where you you know people can just step up and sit down and yeah sit in for as long as they want. But um, it, 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 seeing that sort of propagate throughout the generations is, is interesting because obviously there's this old guard, but there are new new groups that are sort of blending folk and rock and and mm. doing pretty well at oh, it. Oh yeah. Um, so. You were telling me that you recorded this in Ithaca. Yeah. Um, and what was that process like? What was your... How did you decide on the set list? And Well, we um, we decided to go to this place, Electric Wilberland in Ithaca, um, <laughs> partly because it has a great name, and but also partly because we knew that Will Russell, the engineer, is, is great at his job. And we just wanted somewhere... Um, well, so it's in an old church. So we knew that it was just a room that had a beautiful sound. And we knew that he was going to do a great job picking up our the acoustic sounds of our instruments. Um, and so we could just show up and kind of just do what we do, which I, I feel like that's important about uh, when you're trying to do some recording. So we, we play, you know, play and sing songs. At, we've been performing at least once, maybe twice a week up in Saratoga mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So we just sort of had evolved this repertoire of, of old traditional tunes and songs and James has gotten into composing tunes in, in these styles. Um, sometimes I give him little little tweaks <laughs> but, but he's the main composer. Um, so we had these different uh, you know just this whole evolved set list um, and last March we kind of we'd been talking about recording for a long time but, yeah. but last March we kind of you know, probably it was February when we set up the date. Um, we just sort of said, "All right, let's just let's just do it." We're just gonna do this. <laughs> and I, the set list, or you know, the track list. Oh, how did sorry. We, how did <laughs> I know? It's it's like a set list. <laughs> um, how did we How did we come up with it? I guess we wanted to get some of your compositions in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we tried to get a little of everything that we do, like, um, you know, the first recordings we had put online and stuff, and. We had made, uh, they were almost exclusively Irish tunes, mostly instrumentals and also uh, traditional Irish songs. Um, so on this one, there's a bit more of like uh, the American traditions represented. Um, and I think we also went a little bit more into the, like how do we want to interpret this song rather than, you know, kind of... Um, just, just a, learning, a basic. The, learning the song. You know, we kind of tried to come up with interesting arrangements or something that was yeah. unique to us as 
what we do. Yeah, I think we we got we sort of got half and half with you playing banjo on some of them and guitar on some of them, mm -hmm. which was banjo was a new uh, new instrument to the to the mix, and then we got more songs and more singing songs, mm -hmm. I think, and and I guess it was the first time that I was singing also. Um, that scene sort of my new new instrument these days. <laughs> so I, I do some harmonies on some of these songs. And what should folks expect at the Cafe Lena show? Will you be do doing most of the album, or is it? I think we get, might get most or all of the songs from the album, and then and then um, some new some new stuff we've developed since then. Um, mm -hmm. A couple James written a couple more tunes since then, so we've got a couple of those planned, and uh, we've been working on some songs. Um, a couple new songs. Yeah. And do you have thoughts on how uh, younger musicians might pursue this style of music, or where they should start? Um, just you know, basically. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any? Um, well, I'm kind of a newcomer to it myself, and um, uh, just going to the the jam sessions or. You know Irish sessions and just checking it out for a little while and you know ask some of the musicians there what to what to listen to or what to look for and um, yeah it's it, it's interesting having not grown up in folk music traditions to like mm. to jump in you know first you know I think oh this is easy there's only three chords in this song or like this melody is is very simple but then you you get into it a little more and you start to see some of the subtleties uh coming out so it's a real it's a real fun journey you just gotta to jump in and I, I all the people i've met in the folk music community here who do jams and sessions and things are all really friendly and it's it's a very sort of open inclusive environment yeah, you know. I think I think the main thing is just to show up and to meet some people and start listening and mm -hmm. and you know the you know with Irish music in particular, but I think this applies to most types of folk music. There's there's like such an absolutely huge repertoire in existence mm. that no one person like can know all the tunes, and and um, so if you. You, you might want to like prepare yourself to show up to the gym, but you're like, well, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> like, this seems impossible. <laughs> I might as well just give up now. <laughs> but, um, but so one, um, one like really concrete suggestion I would say is just show up and like listen the first time and maybe even just record it. Mm -hmm. And chances are they're going to repeat themselves the next time they meet up because I mean, I always, I repeat myself a <laughs> lot. <laughs> um, and, and even if the people playing in the jam aren't repeating themselves, you could say, hey, you guys played this really nice tune last time. You, you, do you mind if we play it again? And I'm sure they won't mind. So, so that, that's been my tactic when I was a, a kid growing up. And is, is there anyone in the community locally that you have played with or, or you sort of feel a kinship with or you like to go see? Um, or of any genre, is there are there <laughs> folks that stick out you you've worked with or shared the stage with? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> sorry to put you on. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I mean, there, that's. I feel like that's such a huge, yeah, <laughs> huge topic. Like where to start? Well, just thinking of Schenectady. Mm -hmm. um, there's a uh, Cara Doyle, who's a Illion Piper, mm -hmm. um, that we've met at the sessions and. I actually know her from growing up in Ithaca. Oh, yeah. Um, fun, fun little history is she she was doing something at Cornell, and so when I was a, a little kid showing up at the Ithaca session, she would be playing there. Oh, and, wow. And, and so I remember for her from from years ago. So it's really fun to reconnect with her back in this area. Um, she's a yeah, she's a wonderful Irish musician. Um, there's, I mean, it's it's. It's a great community. There's um, John Kirk and Trish Miller mm. are up in outside of Saratoga, and mm -hmm. they're they mostly play old time music, but but they play all sorts of stuff, and they've been great to get to know, and they're very welcoming and and uh, enthusiastic um, for for the music community up there. Uh, but 
yeah. I mean, we could we could talk all day Understood. about all the yeah. all the fun people. <laughs> that would actually be kind of fun. To that'd be a, a that'd list. be a good show. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could have a podcast of just meet your local. I think folk. it's a good idea. that down. <laughs> so, how how should folks go about getting the album if they can't make the show? So the album is available on our website, www.drankthegold.com. And uh, also at our, wherever we're playing locally. And, and finally, I mean, I have to ask, where exactly does the name come from? What was the... <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you, you know, it's very hard to come up with band names because it's, it's a band name, it's a brand name, and it's, it's supposed to be kind of fun, but also, you know, should represent what you're doing. And, and you know, so we were just having a horrible time at, at this. We had terrible list of terrible names horrible ideas <laughs> and um, <laughs> we decided that we were going to try to read this um, it's a, con- a book of contemporary Irish fairy tales or it's, it's mm. one it's, it's one story it's called the hounds of the moor game okay. by Pat O'Shea mm-hmm. and uh, we're, there must be something in this book and uh, so we opened it up and in, in the very first paragraph of the, <laughs> the very first page um, it's describing this sort of fantasy. These witch spirits are entering our our realm or whatever, and they're flying over the ocean and they're uh, sipping the silver of the moon and drinking the gold of the sun. Oh wow! And they drank the gold. Ooh, we like that. So we settled on drank the gold, and um, of course the first record had to be called Sip the Silver. Um, <laughs> we don't know where to go from there. Yeah. But <laughs> Turn so, the page. That's yeah. So the yeah. Hounds of the Morrigan was It's a, was it's a good story if the, you're looking excellent. for Excellent. Very cool. Fairy tale book. Little fairy tale story. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I, I expect we'll share some of your music along with the, the, the podcast so oh, folks can you. get a little bit more of a, a sense. And, Thanks uh, for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll come out to a show soon. Yeah, let us know. Thanks.